Good evening and welcome to our Friday's edition of Shulalanka on TV News. Tonight we will bring you a roundup of our latest stories from our studios on Payatai Road in Bangkok. Coming up, getting around Bangkok can be a nightmare, but for thousands of commuters every day, the BTS is the solution. A conman who preyed on Shulalanka University students. His pleas for help earned him over 10,000 baht from students who believed he was a doctor who lost his wallet. And turning trash into cash. We hear from an entrepreneur who opened a recycling warehouse in Patum Thani last year. Tattoos, the latest trend or a spiritual belief? Thais believe these tradition tattoos are a second skin that holds supernatural powers to protect them against harm. I'm Shima Ekaputri. And I'm Saki Michalidis. And this is the top story of our night. 13 years ago, the BTS was built to give Bangkok residents an affordable way to get around the city. This year, the SkyTrain has been extended to 30 stations. But what do today's commuters think of the SkyTrain? Rafael Nartwine has a story. For 14.5 million people, getting around Bangkok can be quite a challenge. The BTS SkyTrain was opened in 1999. Back in July, the city governor awarded a 30-year contract for the BTS company to continue operating the SkyTrain. But transportation officials criticized this as a rushed political move. Despite this, every day 500,000 people are moved through the city. Two lines, the Ceylon line and the Sukhumvit line, make sure you get where you want to be. We ask commuters how often they use the BTS. I use it every time I am in Bangkok. I am here on vacation and I already used it two weeks ago when I got here. Later we asked them why they use the BTS. It's fast, it's safe for me. And no problem about traffic jam. After 13 years, people appear satisfied with the BTS. But by the end of this year, commuters will increase up to 600,000. With expansions underway, the future looks good for people who rely on the BTS for business as usual. I'm Emre Nachtwein for Chua Longkorn TV News, Bangkok. It seems the BTS is the best way to go around certain parts of Bangkok. Now let's turn to a story on Chula Longkorn University campus. On October the 2nd, police arrested a man who tricked students out of their money. Paterin Temvisut Kuhn talks to one of the campus security guards who caught him. 58-year-old Anon Munisad is a con artist who convinced several Jolalungkan students into parting with their money. He claimed to be a doctor at Sirat Hospital who lost his wallet. Some sympathetic students fell for his story and gave him money ranging up to 10,000 baht. The suspect was sitting here. Our man took position here, there and over there. We arrested him and told him to come with us to the security guard station. Som Sang Mongkut is one of the main investigators in this case. He has worked over 30 years at the Security and Traffic Management Center of Jilalungkorn University. Our job is to patrol the area, take care of safety, life and property of personnel, work undercover and search for news within the university. But they're not just security guards. Deputy Director Leung Sak Bun Bandan Chai explains. We will train our ordinary security guards to be professional. They have to watch over the security and traffic as well, as to prevent and control fire. Some says the students are like his own children. They are the heart of the university. If you have any problems on campus, feel free to contact the security center. I'm Patarin Temisutgun for Jula Lungkorn, TV News, Bangkok. So quietly, security is keeping our campus safe. Well, did you know that we have next to our Shalalongkorn University a snake farm? How would you treat a snake bite? Marinos Victor visits the farm on Rama 4 Road to find out. Bangkok Snake Farm is at the Queen Sawawa Memorial Institute. Run by the Thai Red Cross, visitors can see the snake exhibition, witness the venom extraction and watch the snake show. Acting 2nd Lieutenant Plumchit Disarapong is a medical scientist who has been working at the snake farm for three years. To distinguish between venomous and non-venomous snakes, you have to remember the appearances. 
Actually, you can tell by their fangs, but it's best to stay still. If the snake doesn't feel threatened, it will take its leave. The venom of the snake can attack different systems of your body. It can destroy your tissue, paralyze your nerve system, or bloat your arms and legs. If you're lucky, you may lose just one finger. In the worst case, you end up dead. How would you treat a snake bite? Pantipa Vichinchaya, a student from Satri Maha Pruttaram School, says. Once you get a snake bite, it is best to stop the blood from flowing by tying up the area. In the old days, that was the correct way, but Plimjin suggests a more modern treatment. Now we use pressure immobilization. You tie the bitten area from top joint to the bottom, treat it like a broken bone, try not to move it, and head to the hospital. A visit to the snake farm can show you how to respond to a snake bite. With the vast amount of different species, it is important to identify the type of venom and treat it properly. I am Marinus Victor for Chula Longcorn TV News Bangkok. That's interesting. Contrary to our belief, the snake venom is not dangerous. It's important to identify the venom and treat it properly. And now we go to Roberto Rotundo, who has the news tonight. Thanks, Shiman Saki. Thailand welcomes U.S. President Barack Obama on his first trip since winning his re-election. On Sunday, November the 18th, President Obama arrived in Bangkok on a one-day stop en route to Myanmar and Kambodja. Obama is in town to push his Trans-Pacific Trade Agreement. His visit comes at a time where the U.S. increases its focus on Asia. Obama hopes America can assist in the strengthening of ASEAN to combat the dominant China. Thai Prime Minister Yingluck Shinawat stated she won't make any commitments during the visit. And in the Deep South, a bomb planted under a train explodes, killing one and injuring 50. Police say militants detonated a bomb buried under the railway in Narathiwat province on November the 18th. The blast claimed the life of a defense volunteer and wounded passengers and railway employees. At Bangkok's Huamark Indoor Stadium, Brazil won the Futsal World Cup with a 3-2 thrilling overtime against Spain. It was Brazil's fifth title at the World Cup since 1989. During the November 18th game, Spain moved ahead through Icardo's 31st minute strike, but Falcao cancelled it out with a stunning equalizer with only three minutes to go in the regulation time. After several back and forth fights, Falcao ensured that the final match would go to overtime, where Brazil won the trophy with another stunning goal. This time it was Neto who took the spotlight, flicking the ball over his Marcus challenge on the halfway line, rifling a low left foot shot into the far corner. Conergy announced they want to build two more solar power plants in Thailand. Experts estimate two new solar power plants would cost $38 million. For Conergy, Thailand is the biggest market with four solar power plants already operating in the kingdom. The new plants will supply about 14,000 households with energy. Because of the bad economy in Europe, Conergy is expanding into Asia. That's the news this hour. I'm Roberto Rotundo. Back to you, Zaki and Shima. Thank you, Roberto. They say, one man's garbage is another man's fortune. Shutinanta Bunyama has the story about an entrepreneur making business out of recycling. Every day we see people throw away empty plastic bottles and printed papers. For most people, they don't even think twice about holding on to what they consider garbage. I see garbage as growing business, no matter the situation. Nonman Job is an entrepreneur who opened a recycling warehouse a year ago in Batum Thani. Non and his partner own a Wong Panit franchise, buying and selling recyclables. Every day, people visit the warehouse to exchange their trash for cash. Gusada Aranya Wananon lives in the neighborhood and drops off his recyclables once a week. I watch a TV show that said every trash is valuable. If you put all kind of trash together, it might be worth one baht. But once you group them, the price can be double or triple. In this warehouse, the products are grouped into six categories. Glass, plastic, paper, aluminum, metal, and broken household appliances. After people drop off their recyclables, they are weighed and sorted. The garbage business is big. Every month we gain about 25% of profit. That's why I'm opening two processing plants in Akon Ratasima and Rayong next year. Trash is money, and as long as people leave, there will be trails of leftovers. 
It's an endless business, and if you know how to recycle properly, you can make a small fortune. I'm Chitinanta Bunyamon for Chula TV News, Bangkok. Wow, that was interesting. But you know, not everyone wants to work that hard to get rich. Yeah, that's probably true. So, if you're looking for a more charitable route to happiness, my next story may interest you. It's about the Buddhist tradition of making merit. Have a look. In Thailand, 95% of its people practice Buddhism. Buddhists believe that making merit or tambun in Thai will give them good karma. One form of making merit is feeding fish and releasing various animals at temples. We were releasing turtles so we can have a longer life and birds to get good things. Panithan Pansuk spent one and a half months as a Buddhist monk, a custom followed by many Thai males. It's about doing good things to people and other living things. We do good things today, we will receive it back both in this life and the next life. While feeding fish is not controversial, where Buddhists find animals to release is another question. In today's society, people prefer buying caged animals around the temples for convenience, but caging animals itself is a sin in Buddhism. Well, traditionally, you don't have to buy the fish from the vendors. You just help those um, that in the danger, for example, like those in the restaurant, because they're going to cook it anyway. I didn't really think before that it's bad, but on the other side, we feel relieved by doing this. Today, releasing caged rather than rescued animals is a tradition that has evolved to fit modern Thailand. I'm Shima Ekaputri for Chulalongkorn TV News, Bangkok. Maybe I should go to the temples more often. I never knew about the tradition of making merit. Yeah, you know, temples are such peaceful places. Now on to our next story. In most Western countries, tattoos are considered art or a fashion statement. But in Thailand, a country with a culture rooted deeply in spirituality, I found out tattoos are really sacred. In a small tattoo shop in Bangkok, Master Neng Ona taps away on the flesh of those who believe in the magic of Sakyant or spirit tattoos. Thais believe these tattoos are second skin and hold supernatural powers to protect the wearer against the harm. This tattoo adds charm. It's not a sacred tattoo, so it can be placed on the leg or somewhere else. Master Neng has been tattooing people for six years. The yant, which has been influenced by different religions, is a sacred design. These symbols serve as lucky charms. I would not tattoo every pattern on every places. I had a proper tattoo study and I'm not doing it just for money. Tom Fedder and Arund are the authors of the book Sacred Skin. It chronicles the tradition of Sakyant in beautiful black and white photography. He thinks that these spirit tattoos had a lot of history, but foreigners misunderstand about the meaning of getting a Yan tattoo. The Sakyan are not commercial tattoos. They are not applied to the skin for aesthetic reasons like most tattoos in the West. Or, uh, in fact, commercial tattoo. There are 3,000 commercial tattoo studios in Thailand, and they also apply tattoos for largely aesthetic reasons. Arun Teo Chatura says once Dorm nearly faced death when a man pointed a gun on his neck and pulled the trigger. But the gun jammed and Dom survived. At the time, Dom had one little yan tattoo, and he believes that it saved his life. So Dom decided to cover his entire upper body with more sakyans. <laughs> Sakyant is meant to identify with yourself and should not be abused for trends. Angelina Jolie was one of the first who got a Thai Buddhism tattoo on her back and a tiger, which stands for strength and power on her lower waist. Now that Sakyant has entered the mainstream, it's up to the next generation to preserve its meaning. This is Saki for Shula Longkorn TV News, Bangkok. Did you get a tattoo while you were reporting this story? No, not yet, but I'm thinking about it. That's all for the show. Thanks for watching Chula Lankan TV News. Good, Good night. night.